As the night draws in, criminals start to go to work. And so too do West Yorkshire's crime scene investigators. Excellent, Mike, two to Alpha. Yeah, if you can show me his code 5 to log 538, please. A break-in nearby has been reported, and Chris Barley is on his way to investigate. The burglars have forced their way into the house, and it's upstairs where they've caused the most damage. We believe that the suspects were probably looking for jewellery, that kind of thing, but they have torn open every drawer, suitcases have been opened, cupboards, contents thrown out, so we've had a very messy search. Amongst the chaos, it's the CSI officer's job to find any clues that the suspects have left behind, and finding a fingerprint could be the key to cracking this case. So in just this strand of bed, there's two mobile phones. It's quite possible they've been handled, they've seen the model. This place has been completely ransacked, and the CSI team behind me are searching for any scraps of evidence that they can find. But despite all the advances in technology, central really for the last 100 years has been the fingerprint for identifying suspects. But a new technology promises to bring this to a whole new level. These scientists from Sheffield Hallam University have joined forces with the police in the first trial of its kind. They say a fingerprint reveals far more than just a person's identity. It can provide vital clues about the suspect's activities hours before the crime took place. The samples are analysed here in the lab. They're looking for any trace, no matter how small, of substances hidden within or on the prints. They use a technique called mass spectroscopy. It helps them to find out what these chemicals are by seeing how they behave when they're fired through a magnetic field. To make it easier, let's imagine we have a ping pong ball, a football and a cannonball, and that the field is a steady stream of wind. If you throw the ping pong ball, the gust will have a big effect on its path through the air. The heavier football's journey is less affected, and the cannonball is pretty tough to move. By studying how these balls travel and where they end up can tell you a lot about what the objects are. And it's the same for molecules and atoms. This was a, a, a crime scene mark found on a laptop. And so we analysed it. And this is a software that enables you to see the molecules distributed on this particular mark. And what we think it is here is cocaine because the weight or the mass to charge more technically would correspond to that presented by cocaine. We can distinguish uh, males from females, or we can understand whether or not a person has dealt drugs or actually taken drugs. We can detect ingested substances, so we may be able to reconstruct what that person has been eating just before um, committing the crime. Back on the road, and the forensic squad have been called to another break-in. This time, a television has been stolen. More prints have been left, helping the team to build a profile of the person that's committed this crime. We've got to use all the tools at our disposal to try and identify and solve crime. Um, criminals are getting better at doing what they do, and we need to keep up with them. And this is just one way that we might improve the way that we can use fingerprints and ultimately um, prevent and detect crime. The calls from police HQ keep flooding in. The work is never done. And any new tools for this CSI team will of course be most welcome to help with their ongoing fight against crime. <laughs>